Welcome to a Sunday edition of Peasant's Kitchen. Right, um, today we're going all out. We're going for the Sunday roast. Um, I, I know most of it. Uh, my wifey's uh, abandoned me. She's gone out of her great mates for a Sunday roast in a restaurant. Um, so me and the poor child uh, have got to fend for ourselves, which is, well... Admirable, isn't it? It's um, it's a challenge. Anyway, you may recall in my previous episodes, one of my previous episodes, I can't remember which one it was now, but I was mentioning how I couldn't get potatoes to get crispy, chips or potatoes to get crispy in the um, air fryer. Well, um, when I mentioned that, uh, uh, Mr. B. Watkins uh, from Hampshire, United Kingdom, he messaged me and uh, he basically said, um, recommended that, first of all, you boil the potato. I believe he said for three and a half minutes. Uh, wifey boiled the potatoes before she went, which is very kind of her, I must admit. Um, with the intention of me putting them in the oven for standard roasts. Uh, but uh, I thought, well, do you know what? I'll take one of the potatoes out for now and I'm going to try it. Um, Mr. Mr. B. Watkins basically says that we get the potato, boil it for three minutes, 3.5 minutes, um, and then, I've patted it dry a bit, as you can see, then we roll it in flour, this is plain flour, and stick it in the air fryer for um, 20 minutes. Now, because it's a single potato, I'm going to keep an eye on the time, but uh, let's give it a go. You can hear the air fryer uh, warming up behind me, I'm now going to coat the potato um, with the flour and whack it in there. Now, I don't recall uh, Mr. B. Watkins mentioning the temperature. I might be wrong. He may have said 181. I don't. I honestly can't remember. Um, I've gone for 200 for 20 minutes. As I said, I'm going to keep an eye on the time because I said it's a single potato, and uh, well. I don't think I need 20 minutes, but here it is in there. As you can see, it's coated in. Um, whoa, I should have cleaned the um, air fryer. There's a good drop there and a good dollop. Um, but um, stuff on the thing as well. I didn't know that. Anyway, sorry. Uh, so we'll keep an eye on it and see what happens. Right then, Mr. Watkins. Um, this is the test. I've uh, done as instructed. I must admit, about 10 minutes into the cook, I was looking at it thinking, that ain't doing much. So I took it out and I sprayed a little bit of oil on top. So here goes. Oh, I need my gloves. I know the kitchen's a mess. I'll be cleaning that in a minute. They're making it messy again. So, you know, trying to do things with one hand is... Um... Hang on. Right, as you can see, the flour is still obvious on there. Um, I mean, what do you do? Brush it off? Get an air duster? I don't know. Right, let's do the crunch test. I'm get some, uh, a sharp knife. No, it's better. Let's just get a standard knife. That's what we eat with after all. Let's see if it crunches. Um, oops, sorry. Slight crunch. Sorry, I, I'm clocking this right up, and I. So th there was a slight crunch. Um, I'm not sure about the flower thing, though. Hi. We have another. Partially boiled egg, egg, potato. I need counselling. Anyway, contrary to Mr. Watkins' advice, I'm going to spray this one with oil. So it's partially cooked. Now, last time I did it, there was no pre boiling at all. I just cooked it. I'm going to see how it, going back to this one. 
keen on the idea of having a mouthful of flour. Too hot to eat still. Oh, sorry. Oh, my filming filming capabilities today are um, shape. Right, I'm going to pick this one up. Put him on there. I should have preheated it, shouldn't I? Oh, hang on. Oh. Okay, crunch test. Right. Um, it tastes nice, but it's so decisive for crunch. Um, I mean, perhaps I'm expecting too much. I was expecting nice, crunchy. Potatoes or chips, which should be used, you know, cooked using the same method. See, well, I've used this thing, which is obviously a deep fat fryer. There is a technique that I've used, and it definitely works. And that's um, you uh, cook the chips. No, you boil. Um, oh shit, I forgot. I think you boil the chips first for a little while until they're no. I think yeah I think you, you, you boil them for a little while and then you can take them out pat them dry put them on a tray stick them in the freezer and you take them out you cook them in the in the in the deep fat fryer at 130 until they just start to tinge brown then you take them out put them on a tray Put them back in the freezer for half an hour. Take them out of the freezer. Then, then you whack them in. Look at the mess. I've got to clean this up in a minute. I'll prove to you I've done it. I'll film it. Don't worry. Um, and then you take it out, put it in, whack it in at the full 180, and you get really nice crunchy chips. That's why I've done it. I know it's possible. They're nice and golden and things like that. But anyway, back to today's. It tastes really nice. But there's just none of that. I like that crunch, you know what I mean? My wife, when she roasts the potatoes in the oven, she does them brilliantly. And, you know, they really do crunch on the outside when you when you eat them. And they're nice and smooth and soft on the inside. They're really lovely. Um, I wanted to attain the same sort of thing, but using an air fryer, which is obviously healthier. Don't forget you're talking to Mr. Art Attack here. So, um... I just have to keep trying. I mean, she's left me quite a few potatoes, but I got a share that with my son, and I was intentionally, originally intending to uh, use some of them for some mash, because we'd have some mash with our Sunday roast as well. But, push comes to shove, I have to go back the mash, if I, you know, if I bugger up too many of the experiments, um, I have to go without the mash, will I? But I do love mash. That's on your waist, I must admit. Anyway. So we're 14, no, no, we're four minutes in. Can't even do maths there. And this is a potato that's now on the middle shelf of the air fryer. Um, at 200 degrees. I'm keep an eye on it, obviously. I sprayed it with uh, vegetable oil. See what happens. Right, well, this is the uh, first shift of my washing up. Um, see, I said I'll do it. I've just got a little bit more to do. The old pan. Yeah, we had fatty burgers last night. That's why I'm trying to um, cook without fat. <laughs> it looks like bloody impossible. Anyway, what have we got here? So, we have a potato that looks nice and golden, 
Um, the question is, of course, is it going to be nice and crispy? So, um, appearance-wise, well, it looks like a roast potato, doesn't it? Let's do the crunch test. My silence says it all, it's not. There's a little bit there, but it's still that softy. Nowhere near the crunchiness I normally enjoy. All right, when it's cooled down a bit, I'll eat it, see if it, see if it, well, my son might not like it like this, I don't know. Anyway, bye. Okay, I'm halfway through drying up, and I think my latest effort is cool enough to try. It tastes great. You know, there's nothing wrong with the taste. It's a lovely taste. Oh, that was a bit hot. Um, I'm going to give it a go, I think. Do a Sunday roast with potatoes cooked by this method. And, and Mr. B. Watkins from Hampshire, UK. Um, if you could clarify, you know, whether or not I'm doing things correctly. It tastes great. Or is this a price we got to pay for a minimal fat um, diet? Now, here's where I know what I'm talking about because I'm in charge of this department every Sunday. His wifey does the other things as I've already explained. So this is my little area. So first of all, what you need is a chicken. We have a, uh, an extra large chicken because we're gurganets and uh, we have a boy to feed and um, our dogs will have leftovers. And two or three cloves of um, garlic, one gur onion, one chicken oxo cube, and some dried basil. We shall be cooking it in our trusty old instant pot. So we have the trivet in there and we have about three quarters of a cup of water. So the first thing to do is to um, slice the onion into four equal sizes, slices, and uh, place them in the instant pot. Don't, you don't need to bother, I mean it's up to you if I don't bother uh, peeling them or anything, just chop, up, chop it up as it is. doesn't make any difference because it merely serves as a bed uh, for the chicken and to enhance its flavour. And who knows the um, peel the garlic trick? Well, I can't demonstrate it fully because it's just me and I've only got two hands. But basically, you place the blade of the, um, I don't know whether to do it, am I? Oh, I might be able to. You press the <laughs> blade of the knife over the garlic clove and just gently palm it so you hear a slight crunch. And well, I didn't chop the ends off, but <laughs> if I'd have done that, it would have been a lot easier. But the, the, basically, the, the outer pill comes off a lot easier, but you do need to chop the ends off before doing that. That's me just running away with myself. So I have basically chopped the three cloves. I mean, roughly chopped it, doesn't have to be finely chopped. Um, and then I'm going to unwrap the chicken and I'm going to place the uh, garlic inside the chicken. 
um, and then place it in the instant pot. So when I have my oxo cube, and I'm going to just gradually sprinkle it over the surface of the chicken. And now we're going to, oh, it's going to be a bit empty. We're now going to sprinkle some basil over the chicken. Now, it's possible to use um, fresh basil uh, if you do that, which I've done it many times in the past. Um, about four to six leaves on top will do just as good a job. And that's basically done. So now we choose the poultry setting and that remembers our time from last time. Last time we cooked whole chicken, which is 39 minutes. Uh, for an extra large chicken, which is what, I don't know, two point, I can't remember. It's an extra large chicken anyway. I should have told you the weight, but I can't remember. But your standard extra large chicken from someone like Aldi, um, 39 minutes. That's definitely cooked, sometimes prone to falling apart when you pull it out. Um, it's just that the family prefers it that way. That's absolutely fine with me. I used to do it at 38, which is fine, but sometimes and very rarely I used to get a little bit of red by the bone, which some people didn't like. It was cooked. Well, it might be the, it passed the temperature test, but a little bit of red was showing near the bone. So um, <clears throat> it was requested uh, by majority decision uh, of the household to increase cooking time to 39. It went up to 42 at one point where it definitely fell apart. Going above 39, 40, you're definitely going to have a chicken that's going to fall apart, especially if you leave it on keep warm, which is what this thing does. When it's finished its cooking cycle, it will maintain 70 degrees for two hours and, and, and or until you uh, until you cancel it. So uh, bear that in mind because the chicken will go very soft and will literally fall apart on you. So basically, I... Um Put the potatoes in a basket and I drizzled uh, olive oil over them and made sure they were covered and then I placed them in the air fryer ready for cooking and um, lovingly prepared by my wife we have my favorite veg in the steamer which is broccoli and on the layer underneath, we have some nice carrots. There we go. That's the um, cooked chicken. I've done a little bit of mash with the remaining potato halves. It wasn't a great deal. Hopefully my son won't make any. We have the broccoli. And we have the carrots. And finally, the potatoes. Now they look great. But proof of the pudding would be in the what's it what? Well, and here is the finished article. I mean, you could go way overboard and put some cranberry sauce on there or jelly. Um, I don't have any. Um, reserve for Christmas, I suppose. There's a leg under there somewhere. Be good, lash. A nice peasant Sunday roast, and it's the highlight of my week. Bye.